Here we are. So I'm joined here by Melvin, who has a very interesting company. Um, and I want to say it's either known under page planners or house of confetti. And uh, maybe we could start with what's the difference? So House of Confetti is the actual platform of where event businesses can actually come and sign up and build a website on their own. Uh, it's the whole idea behind it. And at a low cost, got to compete against Shopify and stuff like that. But with more features that are more tar targeting event rental companies that uh, don't exactly get the exact uh, wording or are uh, directed to build their website on Shopify platform. Because Shopify is mainly, for example, like for retail. Um, but having the tools and someone who's actually been an event rental uh, professional for the past 10 years. Um, my name is Melvin, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, but the difference between House of Confetti and Page Planners, Page Planners is more my over view of the, you can say the parent company of it that actually builds out the websites uh, and compared to House of Confetti where it's somewhere you can go and build it. And we as page planners use House of Confetti to start off building your website from there using nice. this platform. So it's basically your own product as page planners to you know offer a WAS to people um, so what's your background? Like, how did you, you mentioned you're a veteran of 10 years. Um, what are you an, a veteran of? And uh, how did you get to building a WAS in the first place? So I started off uh, by building my own uh, photo booth business, uh, which has expanded to different event rentals um, from backdrops, uh, balloon garlands, uh, different uh, event rentals from tables and chairs. And um, my background is kind of like more tech. I've been was studying WordPress since 2009 wow. and not always been fully technical with it, but for the past, at least since 2015, I've been more a professional with it, knowing how to actually work around WordPress and use different plugins and different uh, use PHP, uh, CSS to actually customize the website to be more friendly and compared to old, I'm sure as you know, old WordPress websites were using themes which weren't the most user friendly or didn't look the most attractive. Uh, but WordPress has really come a, lo a long way from what it used to be. Yeah, fair enough, um, I agree. So uh, if I understand correctly, you're essentially someone who, who rents out all the materials people need for events. Uh, but Correct. you have a tech yeah. background. Did you always want to eventually build a tech product around your industry or how did that come, uh, come across? I did not. Originally, I was just building things that I personally needed on my own um, that I just saw it was no market or didn't find a proper solution that I liked. Uh, so I ended up just kind of building it out, finding my own solutions through the WordPress community, find, through other plugins, and kind of mashing them together because not all plugins kind of work together and not all plugins are well coded to have a fast load time. Uh, nice. You're, you're already jumping into what was going to be my next question, which is, what do you perceive as the problem or problems of WordPress or building WordPress products? And what have you solved that is uniquely benefiting your customers? The biggest issue with WordPress is it's not user friendly. <laughs> uh, you definitely have to have a little more understanding of how a UI kind of uh, works. For me, it's easy. Sidebar, I grew up with tech tech, and for the most part, I just know to the left, move things around. Um, for all the tasks are, are all the tabs are right here. Uh, but that's not always so easy to people who don't have a tech background. And I've been trying to make WordPress a little more user friendly through different plugins, like uh, I, like I said, UI Press is a big one that helped bring in the admin end of it. 
I can build a like Elementor. I use Elementor as a big plugin for actually building out the a page builder as a page builder. And for the most part, I kind of forgot the question. Um, That's totally fine. Um, you you explained the problems with WordPress and then uh, moved on to explain what you built. And um, if it's okay with you, I'd love to start a bit of a screen share. Uh, and if you're open to it, guide us through the customer journey because um, it sounds like that's a pretty good bridge to uh, to the actual product. Okay, awesome. All right. This is the background of the actual wild cloud. Um, can you see the screen? Yep, for sure. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Uh, so basically, I built this whole thing on your platform, obviously, um, using uh, WooCommerce as the actual. I've built out two different platforms. One is the actual place where that actual house of confetti is on. And this is where actually all the customers come into uh, where the actual platform is built on the nice so th this is where the actual version is currently we have uh, one custom one for one of my this is my personal company which is my npm and then this one is like the more revised more newer version versus this one because uh we have to make new ones for us to update the wordpress version as you know sweet um to kind of break, uh, show you the whole customer journey, they basically go to houseofconfetti.co. Uh, it's still kind of a work in progress uh, as far as marketing, but it kind of shows you basically what we do. Uh, you're able to customize the website templates, able to integrate a customer relationship management CRM, which is built off Groundhog. Uh, different website forms built either you can use Groundhog's or Elementor's forms to integrate directly into Groundhog all the information they input via nice. forms. Um, we use a user-friendly page builder, which is Elementor. Uh, we use different analytics. We use Monster Insight Inc. Uh, for Google Analytics and then uh, Rank Math for SEO optimization tools, for example. Nice. Um, what is the um, this part. the onboarding like? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was wondering what is the um, the service, the self service versus the hands on onboarding balance for you. So what I mean is you, you're using a, a, a quite sophisticated plugins. Are your customers typically technical enough to use them themselves, or do you do you offer a service to help them along? How does that work? So I am having, uh, so once they sign up, I'm basically running it as a course uh, through emails, like day one, the whole idea is for them to have a fully working website by day 30. Nice. Uh, that's the whole uh, goal with my, the other part of the subscription basically is a course to actually build it out and learn slowly at a good pace and not overwhelm you with learning every single tool. And then from there, you kind of just hopefully just nitpick on the areas that you actually want to use, which awesome. features of the actual website. And so you're eating your own dog food by using Groundhog to automate using emails and then providing a course along the way. Correct. And, and then using different, um, the idea is also using the knowledge base off of uh, the the live chat plugin or live chat website called talk.to. They have an AI basically that can integrate with our knowledge base of talk. So if anyone asks a question via live chat, that's completely integrated in our backend. Customers will find, hopefully the AI will point them to the right direction. Like, oh, you're looking for this uh, solution. This is how you kind of do via this knowledge base uh, post, blog post basically. Wow, it sounds like you spend a lot of time researching the marketing and and customer success side of it. Um, that's that's very impressive. How did you um, like? Is that a like a you, you you dove into a rabbit hole on YouTube type of thing, or did you have this experience uh, already available? 
Uh, yeah, basically, I guess you can say I dove into like a rabbit hole on YouTube. Uh, like I said, I've just been researching so much plugins, different uh, developers, and I know so many different plugins from WordPress that I've, I've yeah, I've heard that one. Yeah, I've heard of that one. I like that one. No, I don't really like that one. Uh, that one doesn't have great uh, user friendliness or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And just kind of nitpicked on what I like. Um, I guess you can kind of say like I'm a producer of it all. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't do full on development. I can kind of do a little bit of development, but for the most part, as a one person team, for the most part, like development wise, it's not the most ideal because for the most part I have a graphic designer that helps me with the templates. Um, and then someone that kind of just builds the, the templates on Elementor. But other than that, I'm the one that kind of curates the whole platform on which plugins are actually the ones that are going to work well and accomplish the certain goals we have from the graphic design, graphic designer to developing on the Elementor and like all that stuff. Um, what I find very impressive is that you're uh, basically using yourself as the market to make marketing material to show to your customers that if you can build a WAS by yourself alongside your other activities, then they are able to buy your product and make and turn that into a success as well. That, at least that's how it's coming across to me. And, and I, yeah, that's very cool, man. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's probably how I'm, I guess I am my own like success story. I could, yeah. uh, I guess, market it that way. Nice. Um, well, uh, don't let me uh, keep you with the uh, rest because I, I, I thought you were going towards something of a, uh, a win, like you, you could win something. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So I did have a giveaway at the beginning. Um, uh, this is no longer part of it. This was during the our launch of the beta, which was in the beginning of December. Nice. We're now February. I haven't changed the front end yet. <laughs> uh, because for the most part, I've been uh, bringing in customers, been busy kind of like talking to customers, previous customers, and bringing in on board off site, uh, which is why I brought up the issue of like, I would like to integrate it eventually. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So for, for, for so, people listening and, and, and missing the context here, um, um, well, explain to me what you would like to get done and I'll. Um, so basically one thing I see that's missing through the WooCommerce integration with the what you guys build with the front end of the plugin of being able to, when a customer signs up via Woo, uh, like the WooCommerce subscription, it sets up the whole a new installation, a fresh installation. But the problem with that is sometimes I bring customers directly, I manually import them into the uh, WildCloud and from there, I build out their website and fix up little things to make sure it's all integrated correctly. And then they're able to use their website, but they're not able to log in through the House of Confetti platform to log in directly to their website. Instead, they have to kind of remember another password. And, and that's so, kind of like the issue I'm having. Yeah, exactly. And so I spoke with one of my co-founders earlier today and uh, he'd, he'd love to meet with you next week. So. Uh, I just wanted to clarify that so that if anybody is listening right now and has the same desire or requirement, uh, please get in touch with me because we'd love to solve that for you as well. All right, so carry on. Okay, um, so that for here, you kind of see the pl the plans that we have, and then mm -hmm. uh, we offer a free th three-day trial. Uh, the goal through the, like you said, Groundhog, the uh, automated emails is for them to have a working front end website via the website templates that we built out targeting uh, event rent, event professionals. So from by day three, we hope they kind of have a front end website. That's the goal. And they're like, they see the potential of this whole platform. Nice. Um, enough to see it within 30 days. Um, nice. It's, That's good. So it's a good. Uh, so from ROI. here they can, so from here they can just start the three day trial, takes them to a checkout form, which is powered by CarFlows. Uh, CarFlows kind of makes a great uh, checkout process for everything with, uh, I'll show you the whole process of everything. So from here, you can just put the, your website name. So I'm going to put live session two, because I recreated a live session just so, because it does take a minute for everything to get um, prograted, I guess you can say through, after you started the process for it to set up the whole thing through the back end, 
it takes a few minutes and for the time for time's sake i already created one but from here you kind of do the checkout you put all your information and then from here it kind of tells you the breakdown it's going to be 400 dollars a year but with a three-day free trial so currently right now you there's not going to be any out-of-pocket commission and then from here so from here you click uh, place order once you, you filled in your uh once the customer has filled in their credit card information, they won't charge their credit card until their the first renewal, which is February 10th. Today is February 7th, which lines up with the first 10 day, the uh, first three day trial. Yeah. And we try to be consistent with it. We have a little offer to tell them, hey, you, we want us to speed it up. We'll have a website for you guaranteed within 72 hours. We, it's kind of like a white glove setup. Nice. Um, That's we charge very smart. An extra, the next charge for them to for us to do it, everything for the most part for them to have a uh, a front end website. It won't cover all the other like extra features, but at least they'll have something to show their customers within three days. Yeah, um, yeah. This they is, can either add it to the order or put no things. I I love this. This is very very smart. Uh, people are already in a buying mode. Um, uh, they feel like they're missing out on this particular offer. That's very smart. Yeah. So hopefully I, I create enough. Uh, encouragement for them to actually come and grab it. I forgot the exact word. Um, and, um, I forgot the word, but uh, for example, once they click no thanks or yes, I will charge their card, for example, the 250 or not charge it and then bring them to the success page. Like everything's good to go here. Um, this is the part where it's not as easy onboarding yet, um, more on my end, but for the most part, you just click the subscription once it's finished, and then it'll take them to their account page. Nice. They'll get to see the website details. Uh, they can change their domain here, which you guys did a phenomenal job into being able to integrate all this information. Yeah, thanks. Um, and then from here, they can just click log in. <laughs> <laughs> so once you click there, you get right here to this page, um, and <laughs> Uh, this is basically the how everything looks. Um, they they should be able to see, for example, like I said, we use UI Press, and I typically have I think I deactivated on the back end by accident, but this admin menu is what I created to hopefully be a little more user friendly with the the nice. left tab and kind of give them an actual overview of be consistent with everything and mm. be like. Hey, this tab is for e-commerce. This tab is for the compliance because we also use compliance. We'll I'll get into more all the hundreds of plugins I'm using um, that not are all activated for the most part. For the, the our simple plan, thirty plugins that are activated because those are the most necessary, the most necessary ones. To dive deep into those, the ones are Elementor, uh, Rank Math, Monster Insight. Uh, the compliance uh, GTPR for for different uh, EU. If you're in the, for the most part, I, I work with customers in the states. So the ones that are really impacted are California uh, companies and Colorado companies. Mm -hmm. And the idea is for them to not have to learn all the laws and like what needs to be done. And it, it's kind of just set up from the very get go. Um, that's one of the things I do want to promote more into my selling point i guess you can say all websites are like uh law compliance uh for privacy and all that stuff yeah that sounds um, like a big another, usb yeah so and then another one is the accessibility there's a, there's an accessibility uh plugin already so for those that have disabilities and stuff like that with uh vision impaired or need to uh, increase the text bigger that comes integrated. That's another one of the plugins that are always just going to be activated from the get go. Nice. Uh, what else is there? Groundhog is uh, activated from the get go. For the most part, our templates also integrate with Elementor to be once you kind of import your Elementor template into the website, they are able to they don't have to go through all the little get, uh, nitpicks of clicking uh, integration to go with the Groundhog. It's kind of already there and any of that information from the basic form that we provide them with 
what we feel most uh, event rentals in that space, whatever, if it's event rentals, photographers, uh, DJs, we have different forms that for the most part, kind of give them an overview of like, this probably we should be asking them on the request to quote or a contact, fo contact form. And that's already completely integrated to go directly into the groundhog for them to visually see that information and be able to talk with their customers and see which customers are actually on their website and Groundhog just does a great job with that. Wow. Um, I uh, I know the guy from Groundhog. Uh, I spoke with him and we had a bit of a podcast. He would he would love this um, uh, testimonial by you that you just snuck in there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Groundhog is really one of the biggest things that I feel like is really innovating uh, WordPress as a... Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's a, uh, it, definitely, it's it's one of the things that expands the use cases of of WordPress, and uh, yeah. that is not a small feat. Um, people still perceive yeah, WordPress as a CMS, and he's definitely yeah, expanding it. Nice, cool. And um, all right, so you covered the templates, you covered uh, the analytics, the Groundhog. Um, is is the WooCommerce going to be available for the basic plan immediately, or is that a part of the of an upgrade? that's an upgrade um nice. so the idea um is for them to be if they do sign up so there's three tiers that i offer uh the the first one which i call the confetti no i don't know call it the confetti i forget what it is sparkler it's sparkler i saw sparkler yes yes sparkler the sparkler one comes with the uh just basically the front end website with the crm integrated uh, but the middle one, which is the um, firework, no, champagne one, uh, champagne plan basically comes with the uh, WooCommerce and uh, any e-commerce stuff that basically come with, with it. And then the big one comes with almost all the other stuff, which also comes with like live, uh, live uh, what's it called? weekly meetings and trying to see what's going on. And is there anything we, you want us to integrate for you? Um, custom wise and um do you it's just more those, of a extra fee right do you use those weekly meetings as a as an opportunity to upsell say custom work or particular services yeah yeah so if there are certain things that are kind of out of the scope of the re uh, regular like maintenance or regular feats that features that are already integrated then yeah uh, i will use the upsell there Sorry. and we're like okay so it's going to be about this much to like integrate this certain plugin or certain feature into the platform for your thing. That's what's great about this whole, um, you, the platform you guys built, which is being able to integrate different uh, features and not have it just be like, uh, it's not cookie cutter. It's, it's cookie cutter, but at the same time, I can mess with this cookie and make it be more custom. Nice. Um, well, is, I'm which, happy which to hear that. Amazing. Uh, any particular features of WildCloud that you're using uh, that you feel add significant value to the way that your workflow works or that your scalability uh, is handled? Uh, I'd love to know. Yeah, I mean, this is the whole uh, version thing. It's like crazy. Like that's, I wish that was around like long time ago because that would have saved me hours and hours of constantly setting up the same WordPress website because sometimes doing the um, using plugins to import from, for example, I've used uh, what's this one called? Uh, I wish it would tell me the name right here. Local. Uh, I've used local to build websites on my local computer, and I've used their um, what, what what do they call it? Bare bones or like to make like a bare bone website, and I've used it, and it's not as great as like creating a version through your platform and being able to edit that version and having it, uh, all the updates go to all the tenants that I have. Um, nice. It's just been the biggest game changer you guys have done. Uh, there's obviously things that I wish the um, platform would like push over, but I get that it's still a separate WordPress installation. So certain things, like if I update certain settings on a plugin, or if I add a new plugin, those settings won't be pushed over to a new one, which is, I believe there's ways to fix that. 
I just there it's are. a little more technical on my end. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a little more technical. Um, and the reason why it's not done by default is simply because it's complicated. Um, yeah. And, and I don't mean to say as in it's compli complicated and other people can't do it. It's more that the consequences of it are very difficult to predict. If you have 10 customers that are all using the same plugin, but they also use different plugins that either work with your plugin or have some other uh, dependency, then updating a configuration in a certain plugin is exactly what sometimes breaks a multi-site, right? Yeah. And so yeah. Um, it's definitely possible. Uh, you can either fix it by introducing a must-use plugin. Uh, for that, you would have to use local or something else where you can um, uh, access the, the, the root files, uh, create a must-use plugin. Uh, we have a webinar on the website that explains that for, I want to say, admin menu editor. Um, and, we, and you basically put the configurations in there, and then whenever admin menu editor is activated, it will automatically uh, see those um, uh, configurations, similar to code snippets. Um, uh, and then there's... A bunch of you can also create your own plugin just simply that and and upload that um so there's multiple ways around it but it's often very use case specific uh which is mm -hmm. something that we are happy to talk to uh, talk about with anybody um so now that you mention it definitely mention it to vinant when you speak to him next week okay all right i will um but after getting it, but other than being sidetracked uh, another feature I think that just makes things uh, great is being able to see all my websites, all my customers' websites, and being able to directly log in through uh, yeah. the back end of the platform. Um, it, it leaves me the headache of remembering a password or Fair enough. Uh, yeah. remembering what's their name of the website and then like being on the search bar really thinking, what was the name again? <laughs> but if I see a vision, like, oh, that's who I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, I'm looking for that website again to go cool. do a quick edit or something like that. Um, but scalability wise, if I get too many customers, it like currently, like if I add in a new plugin, I'll just go to the previous existing tenants and quickly set, do the settings that I put on the new plugin to right. their site in case they're actually gonna use that feature, for example. Um, you, can, um, you can activate new plugins centrally. Did you know that? Yes, oh, yes. Cool. Nice, nice. Yeah, right, cool. Yeah, yeah that's it's just one the thing. Part that um, is the more difficult part. Um, cool. But yeah, that, that's what's, what's great about it as well. I, I'm able to uh, activate certain plugins automatically through the WooCommerce uh, platform that you gave us. Um, but they, I'm able to um, go into the back end and activate certain other ones that maybe they need. That maybe is on their back there like the my middle tier for example or the higher tier uh, but I'll, I'll just happily uh, upgrade it or whatever um, nice if um needed to are you hiding the plugin folder for your users to your users typically yes i think um i think right here it's actually showing it's not but well i mean it's oh but you're logged in as a as an admin right Oh, I am logged in as admin. That's why. Yeah. So yeah, okay, uh, typically, yeah. yeah, yeah, it should yeah, be that, hidden. That makes it seem like magic. Like they can just yeah. refresh the page, and then suddenly they have a new plugin or multiple new plugins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one thing I definitely want to do, just because, like I said, I our platform uses hundreds of plugins, <laughs> yeah. and not everybody uses every single one. And one thing I want to do, what's great about what you guys have integrated with WooCommerce, is doing add-ons. Mm -hmm. And what I eventually want to do is like if they sign up for the starter one, it activates certain add-ons that are free and, and the customer can just deactivate the add-on and in turn deactivates the plugins. That's smart. Uh, it's basically using the add-ons in reverse. Yeah, basically, yeah. So it automatically activates those add-ons. But for example, if I, if I know those customers are not going to be using those add-ons or those customers know they're not going to be using those features, they can just deactivate it which in turn helps with the back end loading a little faster. Awesome. Because uh, yeah, it, it does become a problem with so many plugins being, it won't affect the front end. I, I always tell customers, but if you have too many plugins, your back end is going to be a little slow. Sweet. Sounds good. Anything unclear that I can help you with before we wrap up? I'd love to give something back. Um, hmm. 
No, I think I, I, I mean, I kind of mentioned some of my issues on the walkthrough um, mm -hmm. and you kind of cleared it up. Um, other than that, it's just, everything's kind of work in progress still. Um, no, nothing's perfect. Well, that's the whole so, idea, right? The, the yeah. whole idea of the platform is to continue continuously add value and not have to do that manually for every site individually. Yeah. So uh, um, I'm happy to hear that. Um, yeah. That was... Well, in that case, let me wrap up this recording. Um, oh, by the way, you mentioned before we started uh, that you're open to answering questions for people or, or, or uh, giving, giving some advice, I, I, I imagine. How can they reach you? What's a convenient way? Well, for sure, if you go on to um, your multi uh Facebook group, you can find me there under Melvin Adame. Uh, you can directly message me through Facebook. Um, if you want, you can reach me through email, which is Melvin A, the letter A, at pageplanners.com. Um, and this, basically, I, you can just ask me any questions via email, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have about building your own SaaS. Um, if there's any plugins you have, if you guys have any questions about any plugins or how they work, or if this would fix a certain issue you're having, I'd be happy to give you solutions or tell it, yes, this plugin works, or no, that you're not probably not gonna accomplish it with that. Um, but just any questions you guys have, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions SaaS related, uh, building a website related, anything really. I have a lot of awesome. experience. I'm not a full expert, I, I don't always say. I'm still always a student learning, but I'm not well, going to I teach mean, anything. Well, I mean, what you've built so far is very impressive and clearly well thought out. So I can imagine that people would want to um, uh, learn a little bit more about stuff that they've maybe seen that we didn't dive into too deep. Um, but hey, what time is it uh, in California right now? 9.44 a.m. Nice. Well, um, I was going to say, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, to anybody Hello. listening, definitely tune in to, for the next time. Um, find Melvin where he said he is. And uh, definitely reach out to me if you have any other questions. I'd be happy to record your use case if possible. Uh, thanks. No problem. Thank you, Roger.